92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Brant's in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. We're going to talk with John Alley. John Alley's president, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, and wearing his lovely Woodlawn Hospital shirt today. Good morning, yes. Good morning. It's that time, kind of break the short sleeves out. Don't it, have to wear the long is. sleeves. I'm still in long, but I think uh, we're you're going to talk. Some... We're going to have to talk later. I think you I think... your short sleeves here. It's that time. <laughs> I'm going to have to call you. That's yeah. all there is to it. <laughs> all right. Board was in session, John. Board was in session yesterday. Uh, just kind of an update session. Uh, not a lot of major things happening at the hospital. One of the things that we did talk a little bit about the upcoming hospital golf outing okay. uh, that's going to be on june 15th and still looking for teams and whole sponsors so if you have an interest in uh you know playing in a golf outing or being a sponsor for that you can contact deb paxton okay. at the hospital and the proceeds this one of their major fundraisers for the fundraisers for the hospital foundation and uh, they use that to kind of put back in infrastructure of the hospital and what's kind of nice is that it's an independent organization so they might get with a director and say what do you need in your department okay and uh, a lot of times it's it's kind of small stuff that, uh, you know, they need help with. And so the foundation does a super job. And this is one of their major fundraisers for the year. So encourage folks, if you're a golfer, come out. Uh, in the past, I've always guaranteed good weather. <laughs> I will make that guarantee again, but don't hold me to it. Uh, it's one of those deals you just never know. Explain again how the foundation ties in with the hospital and how is the accommodation there? Yeah, it's a separate entity of its own. It has its own board and its own uh, group of folks that, you know, run that. But they do support the hospital financially, and it's mostly with equipment needs or major renovation needs. That's the fundraising arm of the hospital. Uh, you know, most hospitals cannot operate without some sort of foundation or fundraising activity. And this group just does a fantastic job. They're very dedicated, interested in the hospital. So they come in, and, you know, one of the things we keep talking about at some point, we need to renovate a lot of our patient rooms. They're starting to show some age to that. We will probably look to the foundation to, as a capital campaign major fundraiser. Well, they'll go out to the community and say, you know, can you help us in the renovation of the hospital, make some donations? And, you know, much like we did the capital campaign when we built the addition to the hospital, the same type of uh, activity will come up when we start doing the patient room. So in the interim, they picked smaller projects. Uh, the last thing they, they did, they did a fantastic job, got some stuff for the physical therapy department, uh, you know, and it serves a multitude of patients. So it's not just like they concentrate on a, a single item. It's something that all patients can use that benefits the whole community. Excellent. They do a fantastic job in their fundraising. All right. Support the golf tournament. Yes. Uh, the other thing, we kind of did an update to the board. If you've been in the hospital down in one of the main halls, you notice we got a temporary wall up. Uh, there were some mandated renovations that we had to do to our pharmacy to meet new regulations. So just give them an update where that's going uh, on schedule, on time. Found a couple small items like anything else. When you take a wall down, all of a sudden you find something you didn't know was there. So we did have a couple uh, what we call contingencies where, you know, there was money set aside that if we didn't have to use it, fine. But we are using some of that contingency money to fix some items that were inside a wall. Hoping to have everything back operational. Pharmacy move back into that permanent permanentary by July 1. So, that you know, right now we got a lot of folks kind of spread over the hospital as we do this. So after July, start getting folks back more permanent positions and uh, let that desk settle a little bit. It's uh, kind of inconvenient right now with that hall taking up half the, of the one of the main halls. Uh, makes it interesting passing. You get to know people quite well as you pass <laughs> them in the hall right there. So hopefully by July 1, that's all gone. Okay. Also, uh, let the board know that coming in uh, the next meeting, which is on June 27th, we'll have our annual presentation of the 2016 audit. And we uh, contract with an independent firm every year to come in, audit the books and records of the hospital just to make sure, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to do. So they will come in on, uh, like I say, June 27th at that board meeting and do the fin financial presentation from the certified audit that we had done. Uh, they're meeting with the audit committee, uh, I think, next week to kind of the Here's a preliminary of what we have in the formal presentation coming to the next board meeting. As far as I know, no major issues were found, which is a good thing. It, right. it tells me that, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to do. But like anything else, you know, we're a small enough organization that one of the big things we have every year in our audit is that se separation of duties where we have more than one person trying to do. We don't have more than one person. So we got some folks doing multiple duties. They like for us to try to spread that out, and it makes sense from a financial perspective. It just you know lowers our risk. So each year we get a little bit of different spin on things, how we should change. 
separate some duties out and we do the best we can on that some things we just know we can't change don't have enough people to right. do that so that's usually what they call one of their audit recommendations that they will give the board and it's kind of you know we we take a pool is, is the same one go up here year after year and so far we've won we've got that same recommendation so i'm, I'm looking uh, this is the first year for bkd to do our audit blue and company has done it in the past one of my philosophies is I like to change audit firms every five years or so, and, and that's for not only protection of the hospital, but protection of the staff. If you have the same firm come in year after year after year, unfortunately, I would get to know what they're looking for. Exactly. And so if I had those tendencies where I wanted to do something, you know, not up to up to snuff, so to speak, I would know how to do it. So by changing audit firms three to five years, you don't know what the new firms are looking for, and it's just a protection for the hospital and for me. You know, it adds that... Uh, you know, so there can't be any question of, uh, you know, are you trying to pull something you shouldn't? And I think my years as doing audits years and years ago, that's part of that process. You know, let's keep fresh eyes turning into the organization. Make sure we're doing everything like we're supposed to. Okay. Finally got into the financials for the month of April. Uh, we had gross revenue about $10.2 million for the month. Our deductions are our write-offs, which is our contractual agreements we have with the different payer sources, wrote off just a little over $6 million. So, again, right in that 60% area is where we've been running for quite a few years. Left us uh, you know, money to spend, so to speak, for operations of $4.2 million and actually had operating expenses of $4.4 million. So we did post small loss for the month of $148,000. Know, uh, we hope to gain that back as we move through the year, and we know... You know, we kind of dig a hole early in the year, and we fill that hole back in as we move through year in. Still hoping uh, we're on, on schedule, I think, still show a small profit as we move through the December and, and close the year out. Okay. That was pretty well the board meeting. Well, in relationship to the financials, I know you've got a new CFO coming aboard. Coming aboard, yeah. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on your point of view, uh, Dave Colger's been our CFO for quite a few years, has announced that he's going to retire uh, May of next year, of 2018. So as we were looking into that, uh, we said, well, let's bring somebody in a little early and uh, to help set with Dave and learn our process. And we had another opening come up, so we brought uh, a gentleman in, John Kraft, who came in as a director of the business office. And uh, we've been interviewing folks for that. So we hope to have a permanent p- person in the business office in the next two weeks or so. And then, John, we'll spend more time with Dave to kind of learn you know, how we do things, the operations of Woodlawn. So I kind of got two CFOs now, and that's, that's boys keeping me on my toes. Uh, <laughs> you know, we start the budget process fairly soon here, coming in uh, June and July. And Dave, I, I think we'll probably let John, you know, kind of head up that budget process to let him get his feet wet with that. And then, unfortunately, next May, Dave will be leaving, and we'll, we'll, John will be moving in full-time into the CFO position. John, you mentioned the business office. Uh, talk with us a minute about the, the functioning of the business office and uh, its relation to Woodlawn Hospital. Yeah, it, uh, it's kind of the, you know, every imp- department is important, but that's the one that actually does the billing. So what happens is, if you're a patient, you know, we gather all the charges that come up, you know, during your stay. Those are all kind of summarized, and then they go to the business office. And what they do, they actually will then scrub those bills, make sure that you know they're correct. Uh, that there's the rec- codes that all the different insurance companies need. Then they submit the bills to the insurance company, and then they get the inquiries back and they answer those. And then when the payments come through, then those you know ladies are responsible posting all those payments to the proper accounts, so you know your bill gets the the credit that it's due. So. Uh, pretty busy job for those young ladies and it's the bad part is you know we've probably got uh, i'm at best guess 105 to 120 different insurance companies we deal with mm. all have different rules and regulations so they have to know if it's going to company a they bill it this way if it goes to b it goes this way so very important job uh you know, it's a job I couldn't do. Uh, I, I don't think I have the patience to <laughs> do that. Very technical. Very, very technical. Uh, they have to have a fairly good knowledge base of the government regulations as far as the Medicare, Medicaid rules, and then all the different commercial insurance payers we have. They all have different requirements for their bills. So it uh, keeps them busy, a uh, full-time job. And, you know, we like the unfortunately, the director had to leave. I had some family issues when I get back to Wisconsin. So when you have that type of a void, it's, it's uh, fairly hard to find somebody that can really understand that whole operation. So, uh, like I said, we're doing some interviews and hope to have that wrapped up next week or so and announce a permanent 
person coming in so John can spend more time with uh, Dave over on the CFO functions. Well, we're talking about money here, John. I know that one of the things that you mention each month in terms of your financials is the percentage of write-offs. Yes. And, and you're trying to bring that down. Is that having any success? It, we've had some success in bringing those down. And one of the best successes, you know, a lot of folks didn't like the you know Obamacare, so to speak. It did reduce some of our write-offs because we got people into the insurance market that were never there before who were self-pay. And healthcare is expensive. I don't care where you go, it's very, very expensive. So if you have a health insurance to help mitigate some of your out-of-pocket, you know that helps us because you know at least we get paid something for what we do. You know, we're kind of watching what's going to happen now as we're transitioning and looking at a new model for, you know, Obamacare or But Trump that still care. is the law of the land, it's, right? It still is right, right. now. Okay. Uh, we know there's changes coming. We just don't know what the final change is going to be. So we're hoping that we don't see, you know, a reduction in the number of folks that have some sort of insurance coverage because that will then start driving up our bad debts and our write-offs again. Uh, so we're, we're kind of watching that. Uh, it's kind of hard, uh, even to crystal ball, what we think is going to come. It's just not very clear. I'm not getting a good indication from D.C. of where this is going to go and how it's finally going to shake out. There's been numerous different plans proposed, but nothing really firm yet. So that's something we're watching. Will affect us if we see a dramatic decrease in the folks that are required you know, to have coverage or if we start seeing folks dropping out with no coverage. Uh, our write-off will probably go up again. But, you know, that's unfortunate from a health care perspective. Those who can pay, pay for those who can't. Mm. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's a hidden tax, I guess, lack of a better term, that, you know, for us who do have the insurance, a lot of our neighbors don't. You know, they can't afford the insurance or they don't have the luxury of a, a full-time job that provides the insurance for them. So, you know, we are kind of helping those folks out to come into the, the health care facilities across the country. You know, we're helping subsidize those folks, even though they, you know, they're down on luck. And it's what we need to do. It's, it's you know, we need to provide health care for everybody. It, it shouldn't be just those who can afford it. And that's kind of the philosophy we have. We're going to treat you no matter what when you come into Woodlawn Hospital. Uh, we really like it if you could pay your bill. Uh, and those who do pay help those folks who are unfortunate enough that they can't pay the bill. But we're going to treat you no matter what. Uh, supposedly, the uh, new Trump administration budget that came out yesterday is going to take some money out of the Medicaid uh, reimbursement. Will that affect you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the state Medicaid programs are partially funded from uh, federal dollars. So any reduction on that side, states go to follow. So we will see probably some you know decrease in reimbursement on the Medicaid side. And you know, we don't get paid 100% of our bill. And, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, my gosh, I see my bill. You guys are making you know, a ton of money. It, it, I wish it worked that way. Uh, you know, most of the governmental programs, especially Medicaid, you know, our cost, and I, I'll just pick an easy number to work with, if it costs us a dollar to provide care to a Medicaid recipient, we only get paid 17 cents. So we're not even getting our cost covered for those Medicaid patients. Uh, but, you know, so other folks, unfortunately, have to make that difference up. Medicare is a little better. We get 1% over what it costs us to provide care. So we have 1% margin on the Medicaid or Medicare patients. So, you know, there's a lot of coverage of costs that have to get passed on to self-pay, commercial insurance, and, and other payers. And that's, unfortunately, just the way our system works. And a lot of folks aren't aware of that, that uh, you know, we don't even get cost on a lot of our payments. Uh, so it's, it's kind of difficult. you really got to be good at managing your dollars. And, you know, we try to watch our costs best we can, keep them down, knowing that as we move forward, our reimbursement is continually getting less and less. So we ha we're being asked to do more with less dollars. And it gets very creative as we start move forward into the future. <laughs> John Ellis, President, CEO, Woodlawn Hospital, brings us up to date on the Board of Trustees meeting yesterday. You know, John, I don't think in uh, all the times we've been doing this, doing this program that I've ever asked you what the hardest part of your job is. Oh, wow. Uh, going to work in the morning. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I, it's a fun job because it's not a job that I know what the day is going to bring. Every day is different. But I've had to, I think, pick one item that's probably the hardest part is looking strategically of where we're going to be in the future. Healthcare is, is a, a dynamic industry that changes seems like every day anymore and it's trying to keep on the front side of those changes so we're not reacting to them but preparing for those and i think that's probably the biggest challenge you, you just 
when you think you finally got it figured out, they change the rules on me again. So, you know, that part is, you know, strategically looking, second guessing what's going to come out of D.C. We're, we're highly dependent on, you know, our state legislators, federal, to change the laws or make new laws and make new regulations. How's that affect us? And, you know, sometimes you wonder where they come up with some of the rules they come up with, but, you know, you just got to adapt to them and move on. So probably that crystal ball, trying to keep it polished up and figure out what's coming tomorrow that's going to affect me and be prepared for that because I'd much rather be ahead of the curve than try. If you try to react to it, you're always behind it and you never get caught up. So it's it's a lot of, you know, second guessing. And, uh, you know, I'd have to admit most of us in healthcare are, have gotten really good at trying to predict what that future is going to be. We don't always get 100%, but if I can get 60 to 70% accuracy, it keeps me ahead of that change curve so we're ready for it and not trying to catch up with it. And then probably one thing that doesn't worry you a lot, the, the doctors, the staff, the nurses, the, the personnel of Woodlawn Hospital, quality people. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I've said it all along. They make me look really good. <laughs> they make my job really easy. And, you know, if you surround yourself with people who are much smarter than, than you are, and really good at what they do makes my job pretty easy. And let them do it, and let them do it. Right. Uh, you know, and that's I think that's what we got at Woodlawn. We got a lot of very intelligent people that make me look very good. So I don't have to worry about a lot of the day to day details. You know, I ask a question and they they have the answer or they have the solution, which makes that easy. So I can spend more of that time looking at that crystal ball and saying, okay. Here's where we are today. We need to be at point B a year from now. How do I get there efficiently, effectively, without you know changing any major operations? And uh, so they allow me that that fun part of the job of cr- predicting the future. <laughs> and uh, you know we get pretty close most of the time. Do you have to put together things like five year plans? Used to a five year plan was the norm. It has gotten to the point now. You get much past two years. I was going to say that with all the changes yeah, that so, happens. Yeah, we're, we're looking more now some three-year plans. And even on those, a year and a half in, we're changing them because there's been some major changes in either rules, regulations, or, or laws that, okay, we can't do that anymore. We yeah. have to make a change. So, you know, I, I predict, you know, I'm looking at my crystal ball. At some <laughs> point, we're going to be looking at 18-month strategic plans right. where it used to be five and seven year was the norm. I think in healthcare, we're going to start having to ratchet those back year year and a half is about the most you're going to be able to look into the future with any certainty whatsoever. And once you get past that, it's just best guess. And, and, uh, you know, you don't want to get into that zone. So I think we're going to start seeing a compression of those strategic plans more to short term, not so much long term. And you're losing a board member this year? Unfortunately, Randall Lanninger, he's announced that he's not going to, you know, apply again. Uh, we got to look at how long Randall's been there. This will be 16 years. Wow. Um, so that's going to be a very valuable wow. asset off the board that we're going to lose. And we, we discussed that a little bit yesterday in the board meeting, joking around. He said, you'll be glad to see me go. And I went, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, you know, we, R- Randall has is, is been a, a valuable asset to our organization. Have we argued? Absolutely. And I appreciate the fact that he questions things, which is what he should do. Uh, you know, we talked, I said, Randall, you know, I get caught up in the day-to-day operations that I might not see the forest for the trees. And I look for my board members to pull me out of that forest and say, why did you do that? And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a major void for us to try to fill on the, bo- on the board from just a, a knowledge level. After 16 years, he has a, you know, a lot of knowledge that when I bring a new person on to fill that, it's going to take two to three years for them to get up to speed because healthcare is not run like a normal business. And just it, learning the financial just situation of the, the way financial it works. situation is is monumental. So, uh, unfortunately, yes, he's leaving, uh, and uh, we're it's going to be a hard void to fill. Sure. We're going to miss him. Sure. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Have a good Memorial Day. Same to you. Have a safe Memorial Day. Have a Day. safe Memorial we, Day. We don't That's want right. to see you by accident. <laughs> so uh, use common sense well and be safe this year. All right, John Alley, thanks very much. Thank you. 